need to go. We know what caused the crisis. It was greed and it was deregulation. It was the hegemony of neoliberal free market economics from the days of the Big Bang under Margaret Thatcher in the mid-80s right the way through to 2007, 2008. When I was in Parliament then, I was the first MP to raise the issue of Northern Rock and Granite, the offshore deal that Northern Rock did. And at that point in time, we were calling for the nationalisation of those banks that were failing so that we could stabilise them and by nationalisation stabilise them and get them working in the interests of the people overall. And what happened was the development of quantitative easing. Now, quantitative easing in itself is a useful tool at times, but quantitative easing misdirected simply in this instance, and this is the irony, it raised the asset values of those very people, the speculators who caused the crash. And instead of, instead of bankers going to prison for what they did, only one did, and most of them actually gained as a result of those asset price rises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And don't forget, even then, even then, austerity was not an economic necessity, it was a political choice. And that political choice was made in 2010, because they made, the Tories made the political choice that it would be ordinary working people who would pay for the crisis, not the speculators that caused it. And we've heard today from speaker after speaker what the implications of austerity have been. A million people out there without the social care that they need. 70,000 children being brought up living their lives in temporary accommodation. Four million children in poverty. Two thirds of them in families where someone's at work. What does that say to you? It says to you about the low level of wages. Wages below the level of 2010. And this week the reports, the longest wait in, since records began in recent years in terms of cancer patients waiting for treatment. Life expectancy in this country, the sixth richest country in the world in 2018, life expectancy declining. That's as a result of eight years of austerity under this government, but caused by the financial crash. What's the, the lesson of that is what? Yes, further regulation, of course. But the key lesson is this. Never let the finance sector become the masters of the economy when they should be the servants of the economy. So there are a number of steps you've heard today, which I am fully endorse, and in fact many Labour Party policy in our last manifesto. The first thing is the finance sector has a responsibility to deliver the resources that we need. That's why we need a financial transaction tax, and that's why in government we will introduce one. Designed, designed by Avinash Prasad, working with the campaign in detail. And again, a relatively, actually a relatively minor advance because it will bring us about four and a half to five billion. What will that pay for? Well, it will pay for children actually being able to go to school and free childcare, enabling them to have the best start in life. And it's not much to, for us to ask the city to contribute towards. But we've also said now, we're facing the fourth industrial revolution. We need the finance sector, the city now, to harness the resources of finance, to invest in the real economy. At the moment, if you look at the report recently produced by Graham Turner, it demonstrated still that the finance sector are harvesting the resources of the productive element of the economy and investing them where? In property speculation. And it is bizarre. Some of that property speculation is in agricultural land whilst agricultural production is declining. What does that say to you? It means that none of the lessons of the, of the crash have been learnt deep into the city and the finance sector itself. So we've said we need structural change. Yes, we'll introduce the financial transaction tax. We'll also introduce a strategic investment board, yes, which brings the bank, the treasury, the business department, business leaders and trade union leaders together in which we harness the resources and invest them in long-term, stageable, patient investment in the skills and new technology that we need to face the fourth industrial revolution. And yes, we'll tackle the issue of tax evasion and tax avoidance because in the last general election, you know, they accused me of having a magic money tree. Well, I've found it. It's in the Cayman Islands. We're going to dig it up and bring it here. 
And we'll use those resources then, harnessed from the city and harnessed from a fair taxation system, to invest in the education, the NHS, the environment, the jobs that we need to ensure we restore and rebuild the social fabric of our society that they have destroyed. But also we're going to, and we're going to also tackle the other abuses that have been actually laundered through the finance sector as well. It is a disgrace that the City of London now has become the money laundering capital of the world. We will address the issue of money laundering. We will tackle... Actually, yes, it is often the Russian oligarchs that are doing it. But also we will tackle the whole issue of overseas companies owning properties in this city that are doing it often with hot money, but also they're doing it which is forcing land prices up and enabling people really to exploit and speculate in property here when people desperately need a roof over their heads. All of that... All of that will come as we democratise our economy and part of that democracy will be the restoration of trade union rights but more in terms of restoration of trade union rights is making sure that actually workers themselves will have a role in their companies both in terms of on the port but as we said last week the distribution of shares collectively to workers so that they will own their company as well as we go forward and in that way enable the company to be planned for the long-term interests of the workers and wider society overall. All of these policies actually are simple, pragmatic, common sense that we're arguing for. And actually at the moment I'm touring around the city meeting asset managers and bankers and others and basically saying actually most of this, most of this you'll agree with because you will get a decent rate of return. But the message is this, You'll get a decent rate of return, but we're not being ripped off anymore. Yeah. Ripped off by speculation, privatisation, job cuts, exploitation of workers as well. All of those policies now we're advocating. It's interesting. As we advocate.